Hi, my name is Dave. I'm Head of Sociology here at Cardinal Newman. Uh, I'm just going to talk you through uh, a bit about what the subject is, first of all, because obviously very few students have studied sociology at GCSE, so it will be a new subject to many of you. We'll then have a little talk about what type of things actually appear on the A-level, and then we'll, talk, we'll finish by, by focusing on the kind of career prospects that the subject of sociology provides for you. Okay, so what is sociology? Well, the simplest definition of the subject is that it is the study of society. Uh, and society is made up of people. And what we like to do in sociology is break things down based on the main characteristics that people find themselves being part of in the society they live in. And those three main characteristics are their social class, their gender and their ethnicity. Taking social class as an example, when we study education in the first year of the course, the social class of a student is incredibly determining in terms of what they achieve in their GCSEs, their A-level, what type of university they go on to and what type of career they have in their future life. And there are major inequalities within British society and around the world based on social class. To give you a very brief example, if you have a student whose parents are able to afford private tuition, when it comes to GCSE maths, for example, that child will have a significant advantage when it comes to them sitting their maths exam. They could be sat next to another student who is equally as able as them, who has had no extra support, and therefore they end up with very differing grades. And that should give you the example that the education system isn't necessarily fair on a level playing field. Now what we do in sociology is look at these inequalities and see if we can come up with examples of how to improve society by overcoming such inequalities. And of course these topics are controversial, they are things that in a very diverse place like Preston we have people from all manner of different backgrounds and it's fascinating to hear within a classroom setting people's experiences and opinions uh, in a way that perhaps at high school you wouldn't really have talked about these particular issues. Okay, so across the two years, I've hinted already that we, we focus on topics like education and crime and deviance. Uh, you start off in the first year with the topic of families and households, whereby we look at issues such as the change to families in the last 50, 60 years or so. Why do we now have so many different types of families in the United Kingdom? Why has there been a move away from the traditional nuclear family, away from marriage? Uh, why is the divorce rate so high? And what impact have these changes had on uh, children within families, but also in terms of society in general? And of course there are a variety of different sociological theories that have varying opinions on whether the changes we've seen in recent decades are positive or negative. Um, then we move on to looking at education. Within this particular module we would focus on the impact of government changes to the education system over the past 30, 40, 50 years, changes that have impacted on you. So for example, uh, you've just sat your GCSEs or are sitting your GCSEs whereby it's now under a, a system of one to nine. For the majority of my teaching career, students have been coming through with a star to C and that particular grading system, your GCSEs have changed in terms of the content. How has this impacted you? Why were the changes made? These are the kind of things that we dig into, along with whether or not your social class, your ethnicity and your gender have an influential factor um, and are very influencing in terms of your outcomes at GCSE, A-level and degree. Then, at the end of the first year, we focus on sociological research methods. This is what sociologists actually do. They get out there, they study society in numerous different ways. There are really interesting methods such as observation, where sociologists may actually go undercover and uh, learn what life is like in criminal gangs. Some very famous examples where sociologists have ended up breaking the law and putting themselves in real danger as a result of going undercover into various groups. Obviously, a lot of the research that sociologists do are, isn't as dangerous as that. It may just be questionnaires, interviews, that type of thing. Thing. and as a result we learn how to study society and you will also get the opportunity to conduct some form of research method over the two years of the course. Then into the year 13 uh, we start off by looking at crime and deviance, a really popular module. Here we're looking at the social reasons behind why people turn to crime and deviance. So we're not looking at it from a biological or a psychological way, we're looking at how factors like poverty, social class, inequality, the media how these things might influence people to commit crime and deviance. So is there a link between 
violence in video games, in media, in music lyrics, and the actual committing of acts of crime and deviance. Um, some sociologists will say yes, other sociologists will say no, and they will provide research that backs up their opinions. And that, in a way, kind of gives you an idea about what the classroom environment is like in sociology, because there is never one right or wrong answer. For any of the issues that I've discussed so far, we are always looking at research carried out by different sociologists which will contradict each other. And as a result, you could write an essay, and 20 students in a class could write an essay, all could be very different responses, but they could all be A-grade responses because there is no one right or wrong answer. And what students seem to like on, on the course is that that's taken them away from the type of subject they've done all the way through their time at school, whereby there's been a right and a wrong, a tick and a cross. It's not like that in sociology. Your, your ability to evaluate the strengths and weaknesses of different theories really stands out. Within crime and deviance, we also look at the more recent trends in criminology, such as green crime, crimes committed by governments, so state crime, and of course, cyber crime, which has had a major influence on all manner of different crimes that take place in Britain today. And of course, we look at the way that the police are actually struggling to deal with the kind of deluge of crimes that are committed uh, via the internet. Then, uh, towards the end of the course, we move on to the beliefs in society topic. This is where we study religion in the sense of how much does religion still influence our society today? Has science replaced religion over 200 years? Um, are there other belief systems that exist alongside religion and science today, which are winning in terms of the influence over people in society? There's a, again, there's no right or wrong answers in terms of these questions. We'll look at new religions that have developed in the last 40 or 50 years and also define what religion actually is. Some sociologists would say going to the front at Blackpool and, and having your palms read or tarot card readings is a spiritual experience which should be considered as a religion. Whereas other people would say, no, religion has to be the Church of England, it has to be Islam, it has to be a recognised religion. And of course that's a debate that we get into within that particular topic. And then finally, to finish the course, we look at sociological theory. What do the classic sociologists believe? What do they think? How do they believe society operates? You'll all have heard of feminism. That is the one sociological theory that has become popular across all of society. But there are other theories such as Marxism, functionalism, postmodernism and interactionism, which all believe that society operates in slightly different ways and they all disagree with one another. And once you've got a clear grounding of the different sociological theories, sociology becomes very straightforward. Okay, so in terms of what the course is, it's a full A-level, it's two years, and at the end of the course there are three two-hour exams where you will be examined on your knowledge of the two years of the course. The exams are basically essay questions, smaller and larger essay questions, and that's something that from day one within the course we are focusing on the skills required to get the top marks in, in the, uh, the exams. Um, and in terms of where does sociology take you, well if you look at the type of subjects that sociologists choose alongside, a lot of our students do psychology, they do criminology, they do law, they do English, geography, politics, history, it's the essay based subjects. So many of our students go on to study social science uh, based courses at university and we do have a very high uh, percentage of students who go on to study sociology itself at university. In terms of the careers that that can actually take you into, obviously anywhere within the education profession, the civil service and government, people go into charitable work, people go into care work, people go into the police, people work in journalism and the media. It's not a subject that pigeonholes you into one particular area. I like to see it as a subject that opens doors and provides you pathways to numerous different potential careers. Okay, so in other words, that's what sociology is all about. It's about the study of society. Society is everything that's going on in the media as we, as we speak. You know, you turn on your, your, your smartphone and you will see things that are going on in society on a daily basis which we can talk about in the classroom and that's what brings this subject to life. We like to hear from students in terms of their own personal experiences but a student who does well in sociology is a student who is up to date with what's going on in the world and nowadays it's hard to avoid those things. You don't have to go and buy a newspaper and read a newspaper anymore. 
all you need is your phone in the palm of your hand and sociology is there and it's coming alive all the time. Um, so entry criteria for sociology then is uh, the five fives to get onto an A-level course, which is the standard entry criteria for A-levels here at Newman. But we do accept the four at GCSE English language. So it will be the five fives, but you can have a four in GCSE English language. And we allow that because that, that we, we, there's, a, there's a history of students with that particular grade who are still very successful on the course. A four at GCSE English language in, indicates to us that you can write essays and that is the main form of examination in this subject. I very much hope that you uh, consider taking this course. Thank you very much.